Venezuela continues to be hurt by the crisis, which constantly gets worse. Inflation is worse. Crime is worse. Corruption is worse. Invariably, there will be one resolution. Default. The country of Venezuela will default or it will give in to the IMF vultures. Time is surely running out. You came here for the truth. Let's look at Venezuela today where the hyperinflation is destroying ordinary citizens and we can see chaos and bedlam right now today at this very time. Going to this article out of CNN, Caracas is running out of cash. We are talking about a crisis, not just on the personal level, but nationally as well. They only have, according to this, $10 billion in foreign reserves left. And in the grand scheme of things, $10 billion isn't that much. For the rest of the year, Venezuela owes roughly $7.2 billion in outstanding debt payments. Now, remember that $7 billion for just a moment. In 2011, Venezuela had roughly $30 billion in reserves. 2015, it had $20 billion, and it basically says that it can't go on for much longer. The question is, where is the floor? If oil prices stagnate and foreign reserves reach zero, then the clock is going to start on a default. And I do believe that this eventually will have to come. Will they give in to the IMF? I mean, if they have to default on their creditors, I think that eventually most countries do give in to the IMF. I mean, they could go out and, and do a, what a lot of the European countries have done and try to raise money. They try to, quote unquote, restructure their debt, which I think is one of the funniest things out of all of the financial industry and you talk to people in the industry and they with a straight face they say that these things are good you know it's necessary it's not so bad they'll be able to get a hold of things and they say it to me with a straight face literally as if it's not a joke they're telling a joke but they're trying to make it seem as if it's not a joke and to me it's I mean it's crazy to watch it really is, and to listen to. Further in the article, this is key. According to the country's recently released 2016 financial report, about $7.7 billion of its remaining $10 billion reserves is in gold. And I will stop right there and suggest to you that their gold will be sold off immediately. That gold is a ticking time bomb. It's going to be sold. And I believe if they're going to sell it into the market and try to get the highest bidder for it, that's going to be a big problem because that is just going to be it's billions of dollars, 7.7 .7 billions of dollars worth flooding into the market at once. And at a temporary level, I mean, we look at that and that is not a good thing for the gold price. Ultimately, I don't really care about the gold price. I think it's you buy gold not uh, to see the price necessarily go up. You buy it because it's a hedge against inflation. You buy it because it is something to hold wealth and so on. I've talked about them many times before. You saw recently where Venezuela right here to make their debt payments in the past year, Venezuela shipped gold to Switzerland. So it's not as if they've never done this before. I do believe that if not all of it, most of it is going to have to be sold off. And then the other assets have to go. Look at what's happening in Greece as our best example. One by one, they'll sell off everything. The thinning reserves paint a scary financial picture as the country faces a humanitarian crisis. Absolutely, I completely agree with this, sparked by an economic meltdown. Okay, this is CNN talking and everyone knows how wonderful they are. But in this case here, just this sentence, this is extremely accurate. I've gotten into it many times before. I'm not going to elaborate too much. All I want to say is that this is coming 
to most places around the world. That's why I keep bringing up Venezuela. Obviously, it's a terrible situation for those in Venezuela. But this is going to happen everywhere where an economic collapse will lead in to humanitarian crisis. But nobody's going to be able to help the developed nations if every developed nation is in dire straits. See, developing nations, maybe. Maybe there's a way to help them out. Everyone gets together, donations and funding and everything else, and you know they can help out. But what if everybody's in trouble? Or what if it's a society that has millions and millions and millions of people? You can't do that. People aren't ready. Governments aren't ready. Pension funds are being destroyed. People are being just lined up. There's the slaughterhouse. One by one, single file. Everyone's going in. And all these cattle see is the ass, part of my language, in front of them. Massive government overspending, a crashing currency, that's huge, mismanagement of the country's infrastructure and corruption are all factors that have sparked extremely high inflation in Venezuela. Expected to rise to 1660 this year, and then check this out, 2880 in 2018, that's according to the IMF. I never saw official statistics that said what the inflation rate was throughout 2016. I know they were predicting it was going to be about 700, but I never saw the actual official statistics, and I don't think they'd be real anyway. But if it gets to these levels here, I mean, 700%, you can't can't go back from that. But I, I think, at least what I've seen historically, is that it won't go from 1660 to 2880, in a matter of one year, it's more likely to be an exponential rise. So if it does get the 1660, it'll be you know significantly higher. Let's say maybe 5,000 in 2018, and then it just goes so fast it can't even be measured anymore. That's the the problem that they'll arise. I mean, you look at it right now. How much worse can it get? That's what's scary to think about when you have people literally starving. In a major city, we're not talking about some city on the outskirts. I mean, every country has cities that are doing terribly with mass poverty and everything else. Even take a city like uh, Vancouver, where you have some areas in the outskirts where they have mass amounts of poor people living there. And then you have this, you know, two-sided story where you look at, the housing prices that are multi-million dollar homes for just your average home. Quite a difference there. Another key problem is the relatively low price of oil, which stands at half of what it was in 2014. Venezuela has more oil reserves than any other nation in the world. Now, these numbers are disputed. However, we know they've got a lot of oil. It's just a matter of them being able to Take what they have in the ground and make money from it. That's a huge problem for them. And oil shipments make up over 90% of the country's total exports. Look, even at $50 a barrel, I'm sure they could be making profit. But there's other situations going on here. This is just a chart covering the numbers that I uh, just covered in that previous article. It's clear where it's headed, right into the ground. This year... It's another article about Venezuela, and it shouldn't surprise anybody, but their debt is junk. The SMP affirmed its CCC long-term foreign and local currency sovereign credit ratings on Venezuela. The outlook on both long-term ratings remains negative. All right. We also affirmed our C short-term foreign and local currency Sovereign ratings, in addition, we affirmed there'll be uh, convertibility assets on the sovereign, doesn't matter. Um, look at look at this next portion here. Our rating on Venezuela reflects our assessment that the sovereign is vulnerable to default, absent, unforeseen, positive financial and economic developments. Okay, they're basically saying, unless anything changes, 
they're negative. They're going to default. We have a big problem. And it it's obvious that that's where it's headed. They have a situation that they simply can't get out of and it has to collapse. It it has to. And I'm I feel bad saying this knowing that I have so many people that have contacted from Venezuela who are suffering right now because of this and I hate that. That's why I keep bringing this up because people need to see this. You might see the articles covering Venezuela and CNN, but you'll never see it being talked about in the mainstream media as like a front page story. They talk about all the silliness. Like, did Kellyanne Conway put her feet up on the couch in the Oval Office? I mean, who the hell cares about where this lady's feet were? Who cares about any of that? We're talking about people starving, starving. They're dying. They're dying right now. And we got the news talking about the silliest things in the world and it keeps people distracted because this stuff is headed home. It's headed to your doorstep and I'm trying my best to just wake as many people up as possible. All right, quickly here. U.S. equity surged to an all-time high. The major indexes posting their best day of the year on Donald Trump's speech to Congress. He makes a speech the stock market rises. Where are the fundamentals? It is understood that Donald Trump is ready to cut taxes on businesses. Does that mean that the businesses are bringing their money over? Or are they going to simply utilize that as a way to make additional corporate profits? There's no telling what they're going to do. They're not I mean, there have been jobs that have made their way over. they saying that, yes, we're going to build uh, our factories, we're going to build cars, everything like this. But it doesn't mean that they're still not going to have a lot of business overseas. It's all speculation. That's my point. And that's what worries me at this time. The stock market is rising, 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 rising. Our anticipation is trying to price everything in, but it's it's gone beyond pricing in the speculation and to me that's dangerous very dangerous so if the market came down I mean it's risen significantly at this point if it came down even 20 percent that would be a modest correction from where it is at this point so keep your eyes out on this very much we're seeing valuations far over what they should be at this time Regardless of where you think the stock market is headed, there could be a short-term significant correction. I'm not betting on that because, of course, in this day and age with low interest rates and quantitative easing that's been going on all around the world, this money is swishing and swashing all around. It could end up in equity still and continue on for the foreseeable future. I'm not denying that. I'm just saying that it is very much, very much due. And I'm not even talking about all the reality here i'm just talking about you know ten technical analysis it's overdue all right cc land holdings backed by a hong kong property tycoon has agreed to pay 1.15 billion that's 1.42 billion dollars for a london skyscraper in one of the city's biggest ever real estate deals what we're talking about is what they refer to as the cheese grater. Those of you, perhaps you've been there or you live there, you'll know exactly what they're talking about here. British Land PLC and Oxford Properties Group, the real estate arm of Canadian Pension Fund. Omers, the pension funds, I love them, just love them very much. They sold the Leiden Hall building, known locally as the cheese grater. Investment in London property from China and Hong Kong has surged in recent months. China is buying real estate all over the world. They're buying businesses. They're buying land. They are buying infrastructure. They are getting into everything. They're doing so in Venezuela. They're doing so in Cuba. They're doing so in Canada, in the U.S., in Cyprus, in Australia, and every country around the world. This is a trend that is continuing. I mean, look, they're buying up Hollywood there is a buying spree taking place and while on one hand it's 
Okay, investors should be able to buy things, right? But when the government owns a lot of these companies and they're simply arms or subsidiaries of the government, that's a little dangerous. Moving on quickly, depressed Wall Street exec jumps to his death. How many times do I have to read these type of articles? It's constant. Actually, in this article, it talks about the fact that on the other side of the building, a guy did the same just recently. And it seems to be a trend where all of these bankers are constantly killing themselves. It's gone beyond the trend it's weird to me and I'm just gonna bring it up every single time apparently he was on meds and of course that doesn't happen actually multiplies the issue but anyway if you found this video informative please give me a thumbs up when you give me a thumbs up it helps to push these videos higher up in the YouTube search rankings so I do appreciate that very much and if you found the video informative, I know you will find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. I've taken this complicated subject of finance, made it very easy. I've done so with the use of diagrams and charts, as well as very simplified explanations of these most complicated things. So you can actually look through the book. If you go over to Amazon, they have a look inside feature that will allow you to flip through the pages of the book and see if you like it. Take care. Now, if you're still here, I just wanted to ask you out there, I had an interview request from this individual here, Tradcat Knight. I don't know if anybody knows him, but uh, I hadn't heard of him before, but looking at his YouTube channel, it seems quite popular. He asked to do an interview with me, and uh, unfortunately, our schedule is ju it's just not going to work out, I told him, so uh, I, I didn't do an interview with him and actually looking at his interviews it seems like they go above one hour so there's just simply no way i'd be able to fit it in regardless but i just want to know if you've heard anything about this individual regardless thank you